Hey, welcome back to this 2D platformer tutorial. In this one, we're actually going to create some, some kind of game flow. So now we have our gameplay going on in the screen. We have uh, pretty much some mechanics that we can move, we can jump, wall jump, get coins, all that kind of good stuff. But now we're actually going to create uh, a flow for a game. So we're going to start by having a menu, a start menu. And then we click a button, it enters the level, and we can then play our game. But uh, yeah, we definitely need some kind of of you know kind of menu because right now we're just simply starting the game and it's a little bit too fast so let's go ahead and create ourselves a new scene actually so go ahead up here in the file you're gonna do new scene or control N and in this new scene make sure you save it so control S uh, we're gonna call it something amongst the line of menu make sure you save it inside the scene folder that we've made only for that sole purpose and right now we are going to create ourselves some more UI so let's go ahead in our hierarchy over here so right click in here we're gonna do UI and we are going to create a new panel so it's the exact same thing as before when you create your your canvas or your panel it creates a canvas which is the UI root and it also creates the event system which is used for clicking on buttons and other events. Okay, so our canvas takes the size of your your game. So my game is in 16 by 9. My canvas is also in 16 by 9 and you cannot resize it. Now as for the panel, we will be resizing it to put it somewhere in the center. Now to edit this uh, as much as you want and to have more flexibility when editing, you can put your scene in 2D, that is the button right here. So I'm going to put my scene in 2D. Now if you can see, there is some anchor that uh, popped up right here and now I can move directly my canvas and resize it. I'm also going to turn off the skybox because it annoys me, so double click on that. And now we can see what's going on in our scene. This is exactly the same result that you're going to get when you press play. So just to show you there it is okay so what I'll do I'll start by uh, modifying the rec transform component of my panel I'll make sure to center it as much as I can so right here in the rec transform anchor modifier I'm going to click on the middle one and I'm also going to hold shift and also click on the middle one so this is going to move my pivot and uh, it's pretty much just moving the center in the center so position X is now going to be equal to 0, position Y is also going to be equal to 0, so now we're exactly perfect in the perfect center. And we can give it a specified width, so maybe 500 by... Um, let's actually do 500 in height and 300 in width. Or maybe 300 width and 400 height. Okay. Okay, it's taking, it's starting to take form now. What we're gonna do is we are going to create some buttons in there. Just a simple play button, just no, nothing complicated. Just to to make sure we have some UI in there, and then we can uh, put some function on there as well. So I am going to right click on panel, not canvas, not my whole scene. Just right click on panel, UI, and I am going to create a new button. Now this works exactly the same, however the parent of that button is not the canvas itself, but it is the panel. So say you were to stretch this uh, to assume the full size of its parent, like so, you would get uh, the full size of the panel and not the canvas. So knowing that, what we can do is put a stretch on the horizontal axis, so I click over here, I'll stretch it out on the horizontal axis. Okay, so stretch on the ver quit. Okay, so let's leave it on stretch for the uh, vertical, not vertical, but horizontal axis. And as for the height, we're gonna say maybe like 50. 50 sounds good. Okay, so that's going to be our play button. And we can also modify, not modify, we can also give it a margin on the left and right by adding a value here in the right field and also a value here in the left field. So I'm going to put that to say 20 on each side. And then inside of that button what we'll do is 
uh, first expand the button there is a text component inside of it and inside that text component you can see over here this is a text value the same thing we use for our score display and also our hit point display we are simply going to hard code it to say play simple as that let's not let's not make it complicated too much and then you can play with the font size if you wish you can also give it a color different font if you import it inside your project and we are simply going to leave it like that for now okay let's also add a text in this panel so we're gonna go in panel again UI text and we are going to stretch it on the horizontal axis same thing as before and then we're gonna give it say uh, 0 0 and a height of 50 make sure the text is center by changing the paragraph alignment and then we can say uh, I'm just gonna write game title actually I'm gonna write uh, working title and then we're gonna take this and move it up here so that could be the title of our game this ain't really pretty but that's yeah, I mean you get a picture you can change the font of that you can create your own graphic instead of putting text you could put a image that you made in Photoshop uh, it's also really simple so you go in UI image and it's the same exact deal you position it wherever you want and you change the image right here it's a source image click on that and uh, I don't really have any image in this project but if you had if you had an image you could put them there and uh, just simply replace this working title by a a nice image okay so that was a really really simple example of a menu now let's hit play on that and it's all fun and dandy but it's not working in order to make this work we are going to create a script somewhere else anywhere else actually on our scene and it's going to control some kind of flow so remember how we had a level manager that decides if the player is dead uh, that decides if the player has won what is the score and what is the HP of the player we're also going to have some kind of controller like that in the menu so over here uh, well actually anywhere I am going to create a new empty game object so I remove the 2d so I can go back to a 3d view this is my 3d view it's really hard to see anything let's move this game object this new game object to the origin of the world now here it is I am also going to add a icon to it so maybe the blue one and we're gonna call this game man actually menu manager now menu manager is also going to take a uh, C sharp script so go ahead and right click on your script folder we're going to create a new C sharp script let's call it menu manager this is just one of the many ways you can do it but I decided to use to do it using a manager because um, it pretty much just follows the same thing we did with the level manager so go ahead when you, once you have your object go ahead and drag and drop your new script right on top of it and we're going to open it inside of Mono Develop. okay here is our script we're not gonna get too fancy with that it's going to be fairly simple I'm going to clean it up first so now that we have a really clean script we are going to declare a public function and it's really important that you keep it public because we're going to be calling it from the button and the button if it's private the button is not going to have access to that very function so public void I wouldn't call it to game or something of the sort and pretty much when this function is called we are simply going to say application dot load level and load level takes in a int or a string the parameter says uh, the string one it says the name of the level to load we're gonna give it a string and then you're gonna go check inside of your scene folder what is the name of the scene uh, of your game scene mine is called Jim so I'll just put Jim in there so make sure you have the right capitals because this is case sensitive so our function is really simple whenever we call it it's basically going to say load me this scene instead okay 
So now we know that Menu Manager has a function that pretty much loads a new scene. Actually, it doesn't load a new scene, it loads the gem scene, in my case. And now we need to tell our button, so this guy over here, we need to tell him, whenever I click on you, go ahead and call this function that our Game Manager has. And luckily for us, it became really simple with the new UI system that Unity just implemented. What you have to do is, like I said, fairly simple. You are going to click on your button, select it. There is also a button component in your inspector, this thing over here. Now, if you check the option, you can uh, switch it to not interactable. In our case, we want to leave it like that. And then you have some nice uh, fancy stuff if you want to change the color. So maybe like a cyan, who knows. And uh, yeah, so you pretty much have all that. But below, we have the unclick event which is something really great. Um, it's basically a list of, of function that are going to be called whenever we click on this button. Now what we said is we wanted to call the two game function from our menu manager, so we're gonna do just that. Go ahead and click on the little plus sign down here, and then it's going to ask you for an object, not a function, an object. So in our case, the container of our script, so the container of menu manager, is an object that we called menu manager as well. So let's go back on our button, and over here we're going to give it the object manager. You can either click on the little icon here and look for your novel manager, here is mine, or you could simply drag and drop it right in this field. Now, what happens when we do that is um, you have this drop down over here that says no function right now. But if we click on it, you're going to see every single component that uh, this, main, this item has. So, this item has a game object that we cannot really see, it has a transform, and it also has the menu manager object. Just to show you how this works, we're going to use, say, the main camera instead. So, drag and drop the main camera. If we pull this drop down, you're going to see that the main camera has a game object, has a transform, also has a camera component with a lot of stuff, a GUI, GUI layer, flare layer, and also audio listener. Now these over here are the exact replica of these over here. So game object, transform, camera, GUI layer, flare layer, audio listener. Okay. Now let's go back on our button, set our menu manager as the object we want to use, and now let's choose the menu manager component, and these are all the public function available inside of our script. All of these, except the two game, the one we created, all of these are inherited from mono behavior, so they're not, they're not really, well they are part of our script, but we don't really see them, they're below that. What we did though, what we created is the two game function. So let's go ahead and choose that. And now, whenever we click on this button, the two game function is going to be called. Let's go ahead and try this out. Press play, click, and then it says scene, the name of your scene, could not be loaded because it has not been had to the build settings. And that is correct. We actually need to add every single scene that our game is going to use before we build our game, basically, or we play it in this case. And the reason is, say you're pl you're making a uh, a big game, a triple A game, or something like that. Then uh, wh when you're developing that, when you're making that game, your people are going to uh, create test scene. They're going to to create some kind of gym and uh, they're going to test out, say, the shaders or uh, mechanics. They could be seen as some kind of developer playground for pretty much only developers. And they don't want to really ship the game with these level inside of the game because they take space and you know, it's data that is not going to be used in the final game. So this is why uh, we don't put every single scene inside of the build settings. But now in our case, uh, my gym scene is actually my, my play scene, so I'll be putting it in there as well. In order to add scenes to the build settings, what you need to do is go up here in File, Build Settings, or you could click on Control shift b and these are the scenes that you are allowed to build. 
not allowed but that you are building right now I am not adding any single scene as of right now but I will start to put my menu scene in there and also my gym scene so make sure that you are in the correct scene that you want to have so right now we're in the menu scene we want to have that in our game so we're going to do add open scene and then after that we are going to double click on the gym make sure that you are in your game scene now these are all elements from uh, my game scene so I'm the good one and then click on add open scenes and as you can see we have now added the menu and also the gym scene let's go ahead and go back inside the menu scene and hit play now this is our menu if we hit play it actually starts our game so that's going to be it for this episode guys in the next one we're actually going to use the final object so the win box at the very end of this level this thing over here we're gonna use it to go back to the menu also saving our score alright guys so I'll see you all in the next episode